I would like to tell you about the structure of Python loops and about the powerful underlying notion of iterators. In this video, we will also talk about parsing files line by line using derived iterators such as range, enumerate, zip, reverse and more and about using the most sophisticated derived iterators in the iter tools module. I start by importing all the Python modules that we use in this video. As we mentioned briefly, Python loops are much simpler than C loops. It's not just a question of syntax, we don't have to take care of initializing a counter, updating it and checking its value to see if we need to drop out of the loop. Python loops express a more general and simpler concept operating individually on the elements of a sequence. Let's take as an example the Fibonacci numbers, a sequence where each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. So it goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. I will make a list out of this. Fibonacci numbers appear in many situations in nature such as the branching of trees, the arrangement of leaves on a stem, and of florets in a sunflower, and so on. Later in the video, we will write our own Python generator to compute the sequence, but for now, we will just look over the first 10. A string is also a sequence, so we can loop over the letters of a word, for example, Fibonacci. But in fact, we have not quite reached the underlying structure of Python loops. What they really do is to sequentially assign a variable to the objects returned by an iterator. What is an iterator? The question is, it is, an, it is any Python object that defines the method next. Inside the for loop, next is called repeatedly until the end is signaled by raising the stop iteration exception. Let me demonstrate. By the way, when we loop over a sequence such as a list or string, this sequence is first turned into an iterator. So I call next repeatedly on the iterator returned by the string. I can actually do it only three times because then I run out of letters and I get the stop iteration exception. This makes the for loop into a very general and very powerful construct. For instance, since Python files support iterator protocol, it is possible to read through the lines of a file with a simple for loop. In this case, we are going to read a file that lists the Summer Olympic Games. The file is provided among your exercise file in the description section. We open the file for reading and just go through the lines. So this is a very Pythonic construct to part the contents of a file line by line. For instance, Instead of just printing out the lines, we may want to single out the cities and years. To do that, we split each line at the spaces using the string method split and then print them separately. <laughs> this did not quite work because some of the cities have multiple words separated by spaces. So let me redo it by taking the last word only for the year and all the others for the city. Again, we can use the Python list slice in syntax and we call the string method join on a string consisting of a single space to join the words with spaces. While we are doing this, we may as well remove the parentheses from the ears using the string method strip. Here we go. We store these data items into two lists. Of course, there are better ways to store records. But the two lists will become useful in a moment to demonstrate iterators. So we start with empty lists and append the city and year as we go through the loop. So we have cities of the world. It sure calls for a map, does not it? Let's do one. Remember that Python has batteries included. So there is nothing we can't not do with a few lines of code. We need coordinates, though not just names. This requires a geolocator, a web service to convert place descriptions to coordinates. The package GeoPy offers just the thing. So we create the geolocator object, nominate in one of several. And we are going to make a dictionary out of city locations. 
let's print out a little status while we do it. We need to handle a special case for Melbourne and Stockholm. Let's just do Melbourne. So I will split the string at the slash. The geolocator takes a few moments because it has to go out to the web to grab the information. Let's see if it worked. It seems it did. So it is easy to get a basic world map using the matplotlib package based map which offers many different projections. We will just use the default. We start with a matplotlib figure. Let's make it big, create the base map object and draw the coastlines and countries of the world. Let's use a thin line for that. So very nice. Let's build the cities now. We can use the plot method of the base map object, giving it the option let long equals true since we are passing it longitudes and latitudes. And we will do this in a loop for all the cities. In fact, we are going to iterate over the items of the dictionary, which will give us pairs of key and value city and position. We will use red dots to point to the cities, so let's make them big. Very nice. Beautiful. However, I see something strange here. There were never any Olympic Games in Africa, so we should look at the locations again and see what went wrong. Can you see it? The Rome was actually put in Togo, so we need to be more precise when we ask for its position. Specifying the country will do it. Let's see. Correct. There is actually another city that we need to fix. The Athens that we like is the Athens in Greece, not the Athens in Ohio. Let's be more specific for that too. And let's do a plot again. So it is much better now. Let's go back to iterators. Python offers several ways to make useful derived iterators from simpler one. For instance, with enumerate we can iterate over two poles of an item and its ordinal number. To get a shorter printout, we limit ourselves to the first 10 Olympics. With sorted, we get predictably a sorted list. If we need to, we can sort by non-trivial criteria such as the length of a city name. For that, we pass in a key function to sort it. In this case, the function will be just length for the length of a string. With reverse, we get predictably a reverse iterator. We are going to do it on numerate. So I can show you how we can compose two iterators so that the innermost one fits the outermost one which fits the for loop. With zip, we can iterate jointly multiple iterators or sequences which then yield iterators. The zip iteration ends when the shorter of the two sequences ends. So it is enough to truncate the years, in this case to get just the first 10 cities. Map and filter are special iterators that apply functions to all the elements returned by an iterator and either return the result or use it to select a subset of the sequence. There are many more useful iterators in the iterator in the iter tools python module. For instance, with concatenate you chain two iterators. With duplicate you make a copy. If you are iterating over a numeric sequence, you can compute the running sum with accumulate or an element by element product with product. You can also obtain permutations or combinations of a sequence with iter tools, permutations and iter tools combinations. If you take the time to familiarize yourself with these facilities, you will find that you use them more and more in your code and that you can both write code faster and write code that is easy to read.